Hi, I'm Urvashi, and uh, if you've been pronouncing my name Urvashi, it's wrong. Uh, it's just, just remember Urvashi rhymes with Hershey. And uh, I'm uh, Two Sleevers, that's my blog. Uh, well, I mean, I'm one sleever. There's another sleever behind the camera. Uh, and I would like to walk you through the fundamentals of pot and pot cooking. So, before you spend the next 10 minutes with me, or however long this is going to take, uh, I want you to know this is not a recipe video. You know those cool videos where they show ingredients falling in? This isn't one of those. And uh, what this is, however, is a way for you to understand how pot and pot cooking works. And it's not as simple as take a pot, put another pot. I mean, it is that simple, but there's some basic principles behind it that you need to understand. And I feel like if you know those, then you'll be able to cook like a champ with these. Okay, so PowerPoint presentation, because this is what I do for a living. Uh, so bear with me. Um, okay, so pot and pot, it's just the, the, the practice of this is your outside liner pot. You're going to put another pot or two or whatever you can fit into there and you cook it together. Now, why would you bother? Right? Why, why would you bother with this? Okay, I can think of at least four reasons. And if you guys think of more, type them in in the comments and I'll update this presentation. But here's what it is. It's super efficient. You can cook multiple things at the same time. Uh, it helps slow down cooking, which I know is an oxymoron. You're thinking, I bought this thing because it was fast. Now she's wanting me to slow it down. I'll explain why. It actually does make sense. Um, it's a water bath. So if you've seen people bake uh, with a water bath, this is an automatic one of those. And then the other thing is, you can kind of use it as a baker, and I'll show you how that works. So four reasons. I'm going to walk you through one by one each of those reasons. So in terms of efficiency, you can cook multiple things at the same time. The thing to think about is which things will cook uh, within the same time period. So there are two things to remember. One is the item itself, right? Uh, whether it's squash or potatoes or whatever. Squash takes a certain amount of time. Potatoes take a certain amount of time. But you can change that by chopping it up and making it smaller so that these smaller things will cook faster. There's a, it's a little bit complicated what a statistician would call an interaction effect because what's happening is not only do you need to be cognizant of the times that things cook together in, you have to understand that what pot and pot does is by elevating a dish outside of the liner, you're going to slow down the cooking. So think about it. This is the metal. Anything in direct contact with the metal is going to cook faster. Here's a steamer rack, and here's a cute little pot, which I love. I made a cake in it. Anyway, this second pot is elevated, so it's not getting the direct heat, so it's going to be a whole lot slower. So I'll try to create a chart for you guys at some point, but think about this. Rice and chicken bites, they'll cook within five minutes. So if you make my chicken biryani, it cooks all together. It's not a problem at all, okay? Rice and whole chicken, whole different ballgame. 25 minutes for the chicken, five minutes for the rice, not going to work. White rice and split dal, that'll work. White rice and chickpeas, not so much. This one takes 20, 25 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes. This takes five minutes. Potato cubes and eggs, um, you know, if you're making like a potato salad, those things cook at the same time, so you can do that. A whole potato and broccoli, not gonna work. This one takes two minutes, broccoli takes like two minutes, maybe one minute under low pressure, and a whole potato is gonna take 20 minutes. Um, fish and spinach, cooking really well, both under low pressure, really fast. Fish and squash, full squash, not so much. So, if you have any questions about this, leave comments and I'll, I'll give you an idea of how those things work together. So you can cook things together. You can cook rice, uh, chicken, and veggies together at the same time. You just have to chop up the chicken and you've got to use um, really solid veggies that won't cook as fast. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute, okay? So the first thing is efficiency. Let me show you some examples. So I love putting like multiple things in here to see how many things I can get in here. So here's an instance where I made um, Thai beef bowls. So there's in the bottom there is the beef. Then there's my handy dandy little trivet. And on top of that, I made rice with water. Here's an instance where, oh, this was a really good one. Okay, I put veggies at the bottom, so like to, uh, to make an Indian onion, onion masala, so like um, uh, onions, tomatoes, um, garlic, ginger. Then I put the trivet on top. Then I put um, kidney beans with water. And then on top of that, I put chickpeas. And then I covered it all up with this little silicone handy dandy thing. So I could make rajma and I could make chana masala um, all at the same time. Rice and dal, I mentioned before, and that one is black eyed peas um, with rice. So now when I make those black eyed peas, I put in frozen vegetables because frozen vegetables will take a little bit longer. So I had peas and then I had frozen spinach, etc. So like this is a whole meal, right? Like this is Thai beef bowls with rice. Um, you know, this is meal prep uh, and so on and so forth. So it's very, very possible to do. You shouldn't overthink it. It's really, really easy. And now I'm going to talk about slow down. Why would you want to slow down cooking? 
Well, certain things are really, really delicate. Vegetables, um, fish, shrimp, they cook really, really fast. And uh, yeah, you could cook it on the stove, but honestly, a lot of it's hands-off for me. Like, um, you know, the fish, for example. It's delicate, it's flaky. This is my, um, this is my steamed um, ginger scallion fish. It's a Cantonese preparation. This is uh, shrimp with easy coconut curry. It's really the only way I've uh, gotten to get shrimp work properly. And then I'll explain what I did in that one. So like it's, it, because items are elevated, remember I mentioned this is not in direct contact, it's elevated, it cooks slower. So if you're trying to do delicate vegetables, you're trying to do fish, shrimp, greens, it's really good to have that pot and pot. So you might put your rice underneath. A, a longer cooking item goes underneath and the quick cooking item goes in a pot and you can make everything at the same time. So you could have made rice, you could have made potatoes with any of these. Okay, so here, like I said, put the, put the slower cooking item in the liner and the fast cooking item elevated. Okay, so I just made, yes, this weekend actually, I made the best Vietnamese bo co. And I cooked the vegetables and the meat for the stew in the same time by elevating the vegetables. Here's the other thing that you can do though. You can wrap it in foil. Now I know several of you are gonna write in and go, don't do that, you'll get Alzheimer's. I probably already have a touch, not sure, uh, but I don't worry about that, so it's not an issue for me. If it's an issue for you, you might find, um, I don't know, some other way to wrap it, parchment paper, silicone, something else. Anyway, when you do that, what happens is that it retards the cooking, right? That, that foil is preventing heat from getting to it, so it's gonna slow it down. So uh, when you're trying to slow down the cooking of delicate items, pot and pot comes in really handy. So we've talked about efficiency, cooking multiple things at the same time, and then slowing down. Water bath. So for those of you who haven't cooked in this fashion in, the, in, a, in an oven, um, what you do is you take like a nine by 13 pan, you fill it with um, water about halfway, and you put your cheesecake or you put your custard in it. And what happens is um, the, the heat from the water around it is what helps cook it and prevents it from boiling. It slows it down a bit, it keeps it warm. So you get the smoothest custards, your uh, cheesecake fits really well, it creates a moist environment so the top doesn't crack. Well, guess what? The Instant Pot can do that without any effort whatsoever. So when you're making, so there's a caramel custard um, that I made uh, in the Instant Pot. Look how smooth that is. And if you can't see it here, go onto the website and look up caramel custard, it'll be there. Here is my keto um, lemon ricotta um, cheesecake. Again, most of you have made cheesecakes. I don't need to belabor that one. And then here's one where I made egg cups on the run. So keto egg cups, you can just, um, you know, make a little omelette thing in there and then people can take it in the morning. So when you're trying to create a water bath environment, this is a super easy way to be able to do that. So efficiency, slow things down, um, create a water bath. And then this is the most fun thing whatsoever, is you can actually quote bake in there. Okay, it's not baked, uh, but it's close. And if you live in Texas and it's 100 degrees outside, who cares, you'd much rather do that. So when you're trying to make cakes or muffins or uh, pies, but not like, you know, ones with crust, um, like let's say like, a, oh, I made a coconut, um, a coconut custard pie yesterday. I'm not 100% thrilled with the recipe. Everybody else liked it. I didn't. I'm going to redo it. But like if you think about a custard-based pie, like a chess pie or something like that, minus the crust, you could do it in there. Now they don't brown. So see those luscious looking things? Those are actually uh, Brazilian pau de queijo that I made uh, in there. So they were steamed and what I had to do was I had to pull it out and stick it under the broiler. Okay, um, this is a um, keto chocolate cake. That's so good. You, you have to try this. It's really good. Uh, and this is a really ugly picture of a really delicious cake which was a uh, keto carrot cake. Um, all of these are on the blog, by the way. And then that apple cake. So what I did for the apple cake was pot and pot, um, slow down cooking, efficiency, and um, baking all in one. So I took, like, let's say this is the pot. This wasn't the pot. Let's say this is the pot. I lined it with apples all around. I poured um, the cake batter on it. I put it in the liner, and I cooked the cake. I took it out, upended it, put it under the broiler after putting a little bit of um, fake sugar on it so that it would broil. So if you're going to bake, you could eat it just the way it is. Um, there's some, I have some meat recipes. I have like a gyro recipe that works the same way. You could eat it just the way it is, but it's a little bit unattractive to eat a piece of like gray meat. Um, so in a situation like that, if you want it to look pretty, just stick it under the broiler. So true, you do have to turn your oven on for like five minutes, which is better than the 40 minutes it's gonna take. So, uh, oh, by the way, I forgot to show you guys something. I'm gonna show you guys something right now. Um, 
Do you see this? Do you see this? This is like a completely shameless plug for my new book that's going to be out uh, sometime this week on Amazon. Um, so remember my name. There's only one Urvashi Pitra in all of Google. Do not uh, get confused and buy some other Instant Pot book, although there are some very nice ones. Uh, but this is actually authorized by Instant Pot. It's got 50 recipes in it. It's going to be out tomorrow. Uh, there's going to be an ebook and um, and a paper copy, which is really nice, I think. And I myself am dying to see the paper copy. This is all I've seen of it, and I've worked on it for weeks now. So I hope you guys go look at it. Okay, so I'm all over the place at this point, but we have four reasons you want to do pot and pot. Efficiency, you want to slow down the cooking of certain things, you're going to use it as a water bath, and um, you are going to use it as uh, a baking device, if you will. Okay, now I'm going to do a whole video on containers that are appropriate, but I want you to look um, at this list of things that are suitable and things that are not. Okay, anything that is metallic. So the basic principle is, if it can go in your oven, it can go in here. I do have a caveat about that that I would like to extend. Stainless steel, brilliant. It works really well. It transfers heat really fast. Aluminum uh, works really well, really fast. By the way, I have on my blog, if you go onto the blog, twosleevers.com, on the, as you're facing the screen on the right hand side, in the sidebar is a, a thing that says Instant Pot Accessories. Those are affiliate links. You don't have to buy it, but you could at least look to get an idea of what might be suitable for it. So stainless steel, aluminum, I actually love silicone in here. Uh, and in the next video, I'll show you the things that I really like. Okay, the glass thing. So I am not a fan. Um, the only times I use glass is for yogurt, when you're not actually heating it up. I've had a, a Pyrex measuring cup that was supposed to be heat proof explode in here and wasted my pork Szechuan soup, which I was not happy about. There are uh, old, there's two kinds of Pyrex, from my understanding. The company changed formulas, and so the older one is borosilicate glass. It's, uh, it's safe to use, the other ones are not. So I, I don't, you know, you feel free to do whatever, but make sure it's heat-proof glass. Absolutely do not use plastic, and absolutely do not use heat-safe glass. And my dog just walked in here, so if you can see her, say hi to Gracie. If you can't, there's a dog down here right now. Um, anyway, so here are the containers that you absolutely can't use. So again, this is a very, very quick thing. I'm trying to keep it under um, 15 minutes and I think I succeeded. Uh, but again, I'm Urvashi, uh, I'm on two sleevers. And I'm also on the IP forum a lot. I have a Facebook group if you have questions. The one thing I would love is for you to post uh, combinations of things that I have not mentioned in here. You remember how I mentioned rice and broth, sorry, rice and um, dal or, you know, uh, fish and broccoli, etc. If you have other combos that go real well, when I post this video, please write those underneath so people can see that. So for those of you who are asking for recipes, you don't necessarily need recipes to do pot and pot. A, you just need to do it. So pick something safe and just do it. Uh, it's not going to be that complicated. Uh, and the other thing is take your existing recipes and think of what things will go well together. And before you know it, you'll be a pot and pot expert. So thank you for watching. Uh, I know this is a very different format from recipe videos, but hey, this is who I am. This is what I do for a real living. Um, so I was comfortable doing it, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. And I hope to see you guys soon.